that many don't take the time for their healing. But instead, they keep themselves busy to the point of numbness and frustration. Some are just tired, they're just all cried out as they come to know their fragility. The survivors are looking for acceptance and need closure to move forward. For many of us who have lost someone that we love, this struggle is completely real. Tonight is our opportunity to be present for one another, to provide support, and to give love for healing to begin. We are reminded today to ask, how are you? And then we are hopeful that our compassion will help people to move past just the smiles, the I'm good, the what is. I am strong. You are strong. We are stronger together. Give yourself tonight permission to heal. Thank you. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Please join us in the singing of the national anthem. creation 
that you have made in each and every person that is gathered here today. God, we know that we are uniquely created by you, beautiful and made just as we are. We give you thanks and we give you praise, Lord, that we can come here to gather freely, that we can come here to celebrate one another, that we can come here to celebrate that we are a rainbow people and we are here in solidarity to show the world that you love us unconditionally just as we are. We give thanks for that, oh God. We also ask now that as we open uh, tonight's candlelight vigil and as we open the pride activities for this weekend, God, we pray that you would provide protection for all that will be a part of the parade, for all that will be a part of this candlelight vigil tonight, first of all, but for all of those who will be a part of the parade, for all of those who will be at the festival, uh, whether enjoying the festival, at booze, whatever participation is there, oh God, we pray that you would surround us all with safety, keep us safe, and uh, keep us protected, oh God. We give thanks and we honor you in the many names we pray. Amen. Happy Pride. Many of you came tonight with the uh, Trans March, and I wanted to make you aware of tonight we're going to be releasing balloons in memory of people that we have lost. If you feel like you'd like to um, honor someone that you've lost, or you feel like you need to put a prayer out there, or a word, or a thought, or a vibe, Please come up here. We have balloons, and um, you can go ahead and sign onto them, and they'll be released, and uh, they're going to light up the sky tonight. So please feel free at any time during our ceremony to come up and do that over here. Thank you. TGR ever existed. And I think about all of the girls who came through and who didn't make it. And I think about all of the girls who got beaten back into the closet. And if I give up today, then I let them down. We cannot give up. We have been, they have tried to erase us from history from society, 
from everywhere. And yet we're still here. Your very existence today is an act of resistance. So I want all of you to keep resisting. Hi everybody, um, my name is Miguel. I'm with the Transgender Resource Center of New Mexico. Um, first I wanted to thank everybody for being here. Um, what I wanted to talk about was I want everybody to remember uh, the people that can't be here. Um, those of us who, uh, for whatever reason, um, can't be out and visible or just aren't here anymore. Um, we just lost a local trans woman, Drew Sage, um, on Wednesday, um, unexpected causes. And so that's the reality of what we face. Um, the fear that uh, you may be killed, um, especially here in Albuquerque and New Mexico where there's so many trans women of color. Um, we also lost another one, um, Adele, a few days ago out of Arizona. Um, and so today, you know, while we light these candles and, and remember why we're here, um, remember those people that can't be here to stand up for themselves and um, honor them today. Thank you.
Yo soy Armani Daniels, Mr. New Mexico Gay Pride. Gracias. Yo estoy aquí para hablar un poquito nomás acerca de la relevancia de la inmigración y nuestros problemas con la comunidad gay. Ya hemos visto mucho en Facebook, en las noticias, las atrocidades que están sucediendo en el mundo en contra de nuestra comunidad. Están, mucha gente ha sido aniquilada, mucha gente está siendo perseguida, no pueden vivir sus vidas en paz. Y para colmo, las puertas de los países que los pudieran refugiar se están cerrando. No podemos decir que somos pro-gay. Cuando celebramos en las calles, si vamos, a, si vamos a cerrar las puertas de nuestras casas y poder salvar la vida de alguien. En lo personal, me siento muy afortunado de estar aquí en los Estados Unidos porque muchos de mis amigos están muriendo en México, ya sea porque son perseguidos por las gangas homofóbicas o porque están sufriendo el estar enfermos de HIV y no tienen no tienen recursos para un tratamiento o tienen miedo de que si lo dicen a los doctores o si lo dicen a su familia van a ser rechazados y los van a expulsar de sus casas esta es una realidad tal vez no está tal vez no está tan expuesta aquí en los Estados Unidos pero tenemos que recordar que en el mundo es una realidad diferente y espero que, las, que el futuro de ese país sea un poco más amigable para los inmigrantes y sobre todo para nuestra comunidad gay internacionalmente. I promise I will not repeat everything that I said, but basically what I'm saying is that outside of the United States, we have a different reality for our gay community. There's a lot of people that are getting killed because they're simply not straight. They're getting killed by homophobic gangs or they're or they're being denied medical services. I personally have friends that I've been following on Facebook and that more often than not are dying because they're even they're getting killed by our homophobic community or they're dying of HIV because they can't get they can't afford medical treatment. So I really hope that the future of this country is more immigrant friendly, especially for our gay community internationally. Thank you. Thank you.
vigil but I but I want us to also be happy about things so mine's a little more upbeat um, I wanted to share a quote with you my name is Israel Chavez uh, some of you may know me from my work with Equality New Mexico uh, and uh, other organizations working on behalf of LGBT people in our community um, I wanted to share a quote with you uh, from Cesar Chavez that says our ambitions must be broad enough to include the aspirations and the needs of others for their sakes and our own. And I think that's why we're here. I think that over the last few months, we've been filled with a little bit of fear and uncertainty. Uh, many of our community fear violence, fear deportation, um, but we, we cannot allow this fear to be a paralyzing one. We have to know that this is a signal for change. But I also wanna convey that complacency isn't an option anymore that you you cannot be neutral in this in in what we are doing now in this advocacy that our collective power depends on one another and we're going to have to work together to make sure that our community is better in spite of what's happening for over 
40 years Albuquerque has celebrated pride and it's not simply pride in our identities but it's pride in what we've accomplished. Just this year we were able to ban the harmful practice of conversion therapy in New Mexico. We were able to pass safe schools policies in Las Cruces and Santa Fe and Albuquerque and we are continuing to build a movement to pass safe schools policies statewide. And that's real. Those are real students who will be protected every year. When I was working for Equality New Mexico, I had a young man share a story with me where he was a young trans man. Uh, he was in middle school and his principal brought him into the office and said, everything you are is against the law. His principal told him this. And he went home and he got on his computer and he Googled and he printed out pages and pages and of research and he, he brought it back into his office and I remember he said, I had my best friend on my arm and, and we all have that best friend who was with us every moment that was hard in school and he said to the principal, he said, actually everything that you told me was against the law. Now I know that we all can't be as brave as that trans 13 year old who's going to that middle school and making change and making waves but i also know that we can band together and we can make that type of change in our community because in our democracy nothing is certain and we have to be vigilant if we're going to keep moving forward it's not just when a president is on the ballot it's 365 days a year we We're not gonna go back, we're not going back in time, we're not going back to Jim Crow, we're not going back in the closet, we're not gonna go back to past injustices, and we don't need division or hatred to divide us. What we need is love, wisdom, and compassion to one another, and that's what we have right here. If you look to your left and to your right, that's what we're building. We, we are all Muslim, we are all women, we are all transgender, gay, lesbian, bisexual, queer. We are black, we are immigrants. Our fate is collective and we depend on one another. And if we're gonna make it through this, we have to band together. Yeah. This year's Pride Vigil is about reflecting and remembering those who came before us. We celebrate our diversity and, and our future in unity and love. We are stronger than any force that could try and break us and we will not be slowed down or stopped. So if you feel strong, do you feel strong? Do you feel empowered? Do you feel energized? Do you feel like change is coming? Then we need to put ourselves to the test. We need to get more organized. What, what's gonna happen is we're only gonna get more organized we're gonna get louder, we're gonna get stronger, we're gonna get queerer, we're gonna get prouder, and we're going to make the change that we deserve. And that's what makes me proud. And that's what makes pride. We have to create intergenerational partnerships so that our young people can learn from the people who came before us who have worked for decades, like Janice. We have to, we have to learn from them, and we have to make sure that we are willing to be taught because there are so many here that have worked for decades who need our help. And I'm talking to people who are younger and, and going to take up the mantle that I know so many people have been, been holding up for so many of us. It makes me happy to be here with my chosen family. Not everyone is so lucky to have a family as accepting as ours. And so when we look around, this is our family. Today, I hope that we can honor those people who have suffered, those people who have died, by taking up the mantle of justice and continuing the fight for LGBT rights on behalf of all the community that suffers every day. And we don't stop until we're finished. So thank you so much. I hope that we're ready to fight. Thanks, thanks. So as we transition um, now into this time of remembrance, we have one more song we want to sing for you. It's called I Believe. Um, the text was found by the Allied troops during World War II. It was written on the walls in a Germany basement. It was evidently written by someone who was hiding from the Gestapo. 
Even its, in its simplicity is it a profound statement of faith in the midst of tremendous adversity. The words are, I believe in the sun even when it is not shining. I believe in love even when feeling it not. And I believe in God or hope even when God is silent. process of launching these balloons in the remembrance of the Orlando victims and others that we know and have lost over the years. On June 12, 2016, the Sanctuary of Pulse, a popular gay nightclub in Orlando, Florida, was shattered when a gunman came in near 2 a.m. He started shooting, killing 49 people, wounding 53 others. It was the deadliest incident of violence against the LGBTQ plus people in the U.S. history, surpassing the fire at the upstairs lounge in 1973 that killed 32 people. In addition to being a bar that catered to the LGBTQ community, Saturday night at the Pulse was Latin night with a variety of different kinds of Latin dance music being played, attracting Latino queer and straight people from across the region. This shooting was an attack clearly targeting the LGBTQ community, people of color. It was an event that rocked the entire world as it affects as the effects of hate and violence evoked the responses of shock and disbelief, then turning to actions of compassion and solidarity. Tonight, we call out the names of those we lost 
As we stand in solidarity with Orlando, the families, the survivors, and our community, following each of the groups of names, we will be releasing balloons. Stanley Almodovar. Amanda L. Alver, Oscar A. Aracena Montero, Paul Terrell Henley, Frank Hernandez, Miguel Angel Anarato, Akira Murray was a top student and a standout athlete at her Philadelphia high school, a teenager who impressed those who watched her on the basketball court and those who felt her warmth and magnetic embrace. The 18-year-old was celebrating her graduation from high school with a trip to Orlando. The teenager had graduated third in her senior class, led the girls' basketball team in scoring the past two seasons, and signed to play at Mercyhurst College in Pennsylvania. Javier Jorge Reyes, Jason Benjamin Josefat, Anthony Luis Loriano Disla, Gilberto R. Silva Menendez, Kimberly Jean Morris, Luis Omar Ocasio Pinto, Brenda Lee Marquez Lugo, was 49 and had raised 11 children. She was with one of her sons, Isaiah who went out with her to dance at the pole that night. He survived, she did not. She had also beat cancer twice. Friends said that Brenda stuck up for herself, her friends, and her children. Joel Rayon Paniawa. Giancarlos Mendez Perez, Enrique Rios Jr., Leroy Valentin Hernandez, Mercedes Marisol Flores, Peter Omi Gonzalez Cruz. Shane Tomlinson. She was a passionate singer and had just finished performing with the band before he headed over to the Pulse. He was a vibrant and charismatic lead vocalist for the band, performing at nightclubs and weddings in Orlando area. Luis Sergio Villalma, Frankie Jimmy de Jesus Velasquez, Luis Daniel Wilson Leon, Gerald Arthur Wright, Rodolfo Ayala. Antonio David Brown, Geraldo Ortiz Jimenez flew to Orlando from his home in Puerto Rico on Friday to catch a Selena Gomez concert. Ortiz was a 25 year old and everyone called him Drake. A friend said Ortiz was humble, simple, and charismatic. He attended a university in Puerto Rico. Tevin Eugene Crosby. Dianca Deidre. 
Simone Adrian Correo Ferdinandez Eric Ivan Ortiz Riviera Daryl Roman Bert II Angel Candelario Padro Xavier Emmanuel Serrano entertained crowds throughout Florida. He was described as a happy, energetic person who enjoyed salsa dancing and spending time with his five-year-old son. Xavier had performed as a dancer and entertained at local theme parks, including Walt Disney World and on the Norwegian Cruise Line. Friends say he was always happy, all the time. He loved what he did, and he always talked about his son. Juan Chavez Martinez. Luis Daniel Conde. Corey James Connell. Jean Carlos Nuevis Rodriguez. Christopher Joseph Santilla. Yelmary Rodriguez Sullivan. Eddie Just who worked as an accountant at 2.06 a.m. Eddie sent his mother a text telling her he loved her. He told her he was trapped in the bathroom, that there was a shooter and people with him were hurt. Martin Benavides Torres. Jonathan Cranby Vega. Juan Pablo. Juan and Chris Juan and Christopher were described as a perfect couple, very much in love. Friends said that the couple displayed love that they wished that they would see in the world. The kind of the kind that pulls people together and breaks breaks down walls. Andrew worked as a mental, mental health counselor when he was in high school. He started the Gay Straight Alliance and had recently won the Anne Frank Humanitarian Award for his work within the gay community. We take a moment to remember the friends, the family of the nine who were I'm sorry. We take a moment to remember the family and the friends of the 49 people who lost their lives that night. Mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, sons, daughters, partners, husbands, wives. Alex Hernando lost his son Miguel Angel Hernando in the shooting at the Pulse nightclub. Miguel was 30 years old, married a married father of three who helped grow his immigrant family roadside taco business into starting a Central Florida Mexican grocery store. Miguel's father said, I thought with time the pain would go away, but no, no. The more the months pass, the more I feel like I was, the more I feel it's going to be another year. It's going to going to be another year but it just like it just happened he plans on serving many hours Monday at the cemetery praying over his praying over the son's grave
We remember the 53 people who were wounded and the, count and the countless others who were wounded spiritually, psychologically, and physically in other ways. Ilka Reyes was one of those wounded. She lost her right pinky, which she says is minor, compared to her shattered shoulder blade and the damage done by the nine bullets that hit her. Fragments now part of her body forever. Those injuries pale in comparison to the vivid trauma of that night and the grief Reyes carries for her three friends who didn't survive. Though Reyes was found unexpected well of faith and support, there are difficult days. Release the balloon. While we may not want to mention the person responsible for the horrific events at Pulse, it is important to look at why this person felt he had to commit such a violent act. Officials state that the shooter claimed to have ties to a terrorist group, and the shooter made statements that he was a soldier of God. Community members indicate that the shooter had frequented the Pulse nightclub and had encounters with men it, it appears he struggled with his sexuality. The shooter had a mental illness, and hopefully we can find it within our hearts to offer him forgiveness and mercy. He left behind a young son who will have to grow up in the shadow of his father's legacy. Let us acknowledge that many people struggle and live with a mental illness. Let us acknowledge that many people are unable to accept who they are be it their gender identity, their sexuality, or any other part that identifies them, and that their struggle comes from the judgment of others, family, friends, and faith communities often. So tonight, we release balloons for all those who struggle with accepting who they are. We lift up those who live with a mental illness, that they may know peace and find acceptance within this community and may our community be a safe place for people to find refuge and a place to belong. May we be reminded not to judge others and that love is always stronger than hate. So we've almost come to the time where it's time to light our candles in remembrance. Um, I just ask for you to get your candles ready, but just hold off for a moment. We have a little liturgy that we like to read and hear. Um, so have your candles ready. We are grateful for the gift of our lives and for the gift of others in our lives. Each of us is created with dignity and worth. We are called to love each other and to do nothing to others that we would find hateful to ourselves. We honor the many ways that people live and love. Love does not exclude. We are all worthy. We suffer when any group, including LGBTIQ persons, are oppressed, excluded, and shamed by religious people who overlook the fundamental call to justice. True justice flourishes when we can live with authenticity and integrity. May we work to build a community where all people are celebrated as full and equal members, recognized by their many gifts. We celebrate sexual and gender diversity as a blessing that enriches us all. We light our candles in honor of all those who have gone before us, who worked towards justice and inclusion.
We light our candles to celebrate who we are, that in our diversity, we are still one loving community where no one is judged or excluded. As you light the candles of those around you, share a word with someone, a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a word of acceptance, a word of celebration, a word of joy, a word of love because there is a place for you in this community. and sharing your compassion and your love for one another. Coming out tonight, you are the catalyst of change. That your heart is a heart that's big, it's beating, and it's there for one another. I ask that tonight you not forget your participation in what we've done tonight. We've recreated connectivity. We've created a chain reaction of love. So again, I say thank you to you from the bottom of my heart. Well, happy Pride, everybody. We have, not only tonight, but we've got some events the rest of the weekend. On tomorrow night, over at the Expo, it's a free night of Pride. 
At 6 o'clock, there's the Main Street and Vendors and live music. At 7.15, they're going to honor the GLBTQ elders at the Enfuego live music stage. At 7.30, there's an art reception and hors d'oeuvres. That, that word always looks like horse ovaries to me. But it's hors d'oeuvres and cocktails. That's, can I get an amen for the cocktails? And then at 8.30, there's going to be a movie in the park, and I believe it's called Mona. Moana, okay. <clears throat> and then on, uh, then on Saturday, does anybody have any idea what's happening on Saturday? Does anybody know where it's happening at? It starts at Washington and Lomas, that area, and it's going to move east, okay? So if you show up anywhere else in Albuquerque, you're not as smart as my barber because he knew where we were going to be at and he's a straight old man. Okay, so it's Washington, Lomas, all the way down to the expo at, uh, at San Pedro. Okay, so be there. The parade steps off at 10 o'clock and we have over 100 entries, so it's going to be big and fabulous. And then following the parade is what? Pride Fest, that's at the Expo, and it will be fabulous as well. There is going to be everything there. It, to get in the gate, it's going to be $15, and there's some other information here. But just go and have a good time Saturday at the Expo. Here's what you do. Eat, drink, and be merry, and if I start to look good, you know it's time to stop drinking. All right? Okay, then as if that wasn't enough, we have uh, one more event on Sunday, and it is the Resist Rally. It's going to be at Robinson Park, and uh, you can start, uh, it's going to be just to kind of mobilize the GOPD community. Res resist fear, misogyny, racism, transphobia, bigotry, and violence. That's Robinson Park. And in case you don't know where Robinson Park is, it's between downtown and Old Town. It's that kind of triangle-shaped one right there as you come out of the turn, turn, turn around thing. All right? Question, comments, insult. Just let the Pride Board know. We'll see you the rest of the weekend. There's a big thing going over at Social Club tonight. Go be there or go to the bar of your choice, Sidewinders, wherever. Go have a good time. Celebrate being who we are. Good night, everybody.